of water, so the nature and quality of the impact. Number two, very important, the sustainability of your effort. We do not we are not looking for an impact that is only during the period of time during which you are actually involved in the effort, but an effort that is designed to last far beyond your particular activity. So hopefully, if you're putting up signs, they're signs that are designed to remain there. If you are encouraging people to change their behavior, you're encouraging them in a way that might outlast your particular involvement. Number three, the measurability, which I've discussed, and number four, the feedback from your stakeholders. It is important that your stakeholders understand the nature of the social change, but also that you impact them in a way that is realistic and reasonable. If you, for instance, ask the Dean of Melbourne Business School to change the use of his water bottles into a water machine where he's going to need glasses, not paper cups because that might defeat the purpose and use up a lot of paper, you need to work out with his assistant how she is going to get the glassware up there every day and then perhaps get them cleaned. So if the impact on the stakeholder is to increase her workload so much she'll never use it, that's probably not the best project. Let me give you a few examples so that you understand the wide range of activities in which you could engage and then offer a few cautions to avoid in terms of pitfalls. Examples. One of the examples is something called One Small Act, Changing the World One Small Act at a Time. This was a project done by students at the Melbourne Business School just last year, and what they did was to catalog the efforts of everyone in their particular class to do good as examples of how easy it is to have an impact. So what they did was they collected photographs of everyone in their class doing something that they defined as good. Now this might not seem as if they're doing anything themselves in order to have an impact on an area of social change. But what they did with those photographs is that they made a video, posted it to YouTube, and created an online forum to discuss how very small acts can actually change the world. Okay, so that's kind of good, but what they ended up doing was using that video to recognize, motivate, and inspire others to do additional small acts for other people. So it gave people ideas of how really small things can have a very significant impact. It inspired other people to do more. How do we know that? Because they measured it. They measured it by the number of hits to the YouTube video and they evidenced hundreds and hundreds of hits even within the first few days. They measured it by the comments on the, blog, on, on the video and then additional blog hits and people said, this inspired me, it made me want to go out and do some of these things. And finally, rankings on YouTube. They got rankings in the top 10 for being most viewed and most discussed. Marvelous project. Number two, my second example, is an organ donor sign-up drive. They started with research into the issues so that they could educate themselves um, about the issues of organ donations in Australia. They then conducted a survey of awareness of the issue and found that people really did not understand the process. Based on that, they asked people to go and actually register. The numbers are marvelous. They conducted 80 surveys, found that 41% were not yet donors, and 53% of those agreed to register. Now think about those numbers. 53% registered, many, many lives were saved by this project, that would mean, because now we have these organ donations that could absolutely save lives talk about changing the world. Other examples I won't go into as much detail, but they got offices to set the default on printers to double-sided. So it, it saved paper, you know, is that 50% or 100%? 50, 100%. Um, they got commitments from businesses to send e-cards instead of paper cards at the holidays. So they were able to um, measure the amount of paper savings and then financial savings. Or donating professional clothing to a shelter so that people living in poverty could have appropriate attire when they went on job interviews. Marvelous ideas. You can come up with plenty of creative ideas yourselves. So, finally, the pitfalls. 
Let me give you just a couple of warnings of things to avoid so that you can get the highest marks when the judges look at your presentations. Number one, think ahead. Plan for the what ifs because plenty of those what ifs come up. So plan for every eventuality. Number two, start out really small. Think about how to impact yourselves and then branch out and think about whom else you could impact in the same way. Number three, don't worry about asking outsiders for help. People would love to help you on this project. Just make sure that they act as partners, not as leaders of your project. We want to see what you can do. And finally, I said it before, but I'll say it again. Make sure, be certain, that you can complete the project by the deadline date. You have to make the change. Don't just plan for it. The end result, the end learning that you can gain from this experience is that you can do anything. You can. You can do anything almost with, with any resources that you can create. You can discover. You can do anything with this project and you can make a difference. And if you can make a difference today with this team, with this group, imagine what you can do once you graduate and you're in extraordinary leadership roles as Trinity College graduates. You can absolutely change the world and I can't wait to see what you do with it. Good luck.